All right, it's good to see you back. In the last video, we got started with Tone.js by creating a very super simple synth, and we also learned how to trigger a note from that synth. Now, how can we take that simple synth tone that we created and make it a little bit more exciting? Well, one way to do this is with effects. That's the focus of this video. So this list is taken from the Tone.js docs, and you can see the selection of effects that we're given to work with. If you've worked with audio and mixing a lot before, many of these will be familiar to you, like chorus, distortion, and reverb. Basically, the effects in Tone.js are modules that can be added to audio signals or chained together with them to modify them in various ways. As we're going to see, each of these effects has its own set of parameters that you can tweak to achieve different sonic results. And we'll look at those parameters by exploring the documentation a little bit. The specific effect I'm going to use in this video is the feedback delay. Delays are always fun to work with, I think. All right, so jumping back into the code that we left off with from the last video, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the half note duration of the trigger attack release to an eighth note. I think using the shorter eighth note duration will let the feedback delay that we're about to apply be a little bit easier to hear. So now to create this feedback delay, we're going to instantiate it or create an instance of it just like we did when we created the synth. So let's declare a constant and we can call it feedback delay and set it equal to a new tone dot feedback delay. And for the moment, we'll leave it just like this. But what we do need to do is we need to now connect our synth to the feedback delay and then connect that feedback delay to the output or destination, right? Because right now the synth here is going straight to the destination. So we're going to see two ways to do this, but the first one is by using the connect method. So we can say synth.connect, and then here we're going to pass it the audio node that we want to connect to, and that's going to be the feedback delay. So think of the connect method as being sort of like an audio cable. We're taking a synth and plugging it into a delay effect. And then finally, we want to take that feedback delay and connect that to the destination. All right, and now that we're doing this, we can get rid of this to destination from the synth. So now if we go ahead and play the note, we should hear a bit of the delay effect applied. And hopefully you can hear it. It's kind of subtle right now. But that's why I'm going to show you the next step, and that is to pass in some parameters to this feedback delay when we set it up. Oh, snap! So in order to know what parameters we can give the feedback delay, we can make our way over to the documentation. And here we're on the page for the feedback delay. And if you look up top, you can see they give an example of how to use the feedback delay. If we look at this very first line, we can see that it takes a note duration and then a time. So when you're using the documentation here, what you can do is you can come down a little bit to where it says constructor, and this is going to show you what the feedback delay can take as parameters. Now with most of the effects that are created with Tone.js, there's going to be two different ways to pass in the parameters to the constructor. This is going to be as individual arguments, like we see here with delay time and feedback, or we can pass in an options object. So let's start with the first approach, passing in the individual arguments. And here we can see with delay time and feedback, we can see the types of values that they take. So if I click on time, in a new tab, I can see here that time can be described in a number of ways. So there's various ways to pass in the value for time. We can pass it in as a number, as musical notation, like here quarter note and eighth note triplets or transport time or frequency, and there's other ways as well. And then for feedback, if we click on normal range, we can see that that's going to be a number between 0 and 1. So let's go back to our code and let's experiment by passing in a delay time and a feedback value. So I'm going to come into this line here, and I'm going to start out by passing in a delay time. And the delay time is the amount of time between each successive delay. So as the doc said, one of the ways that we can set it is with note durations. So I'm going to set it for 4n, which would be a quarter note. And then I'm also going to pass in a feedback value. So what happens in a feedback delay is that the delayed repeats get passed back into the input of the delay and end up creating the stream of repeating and decaying delays. So from the docs, we saw that the value is going to be between 0 and 1. 
which means we can think about this in terms of percentages. So if I did 0.5, that would be 50%. So let's save this and let's play and see if we notice a difference now. Yeah, so there I think you can hear a much more obvious string of delays. They're a bit louder and more distinct, and they last longer since we do have that feedback at kind of a substantial setting. But let's play around with this a little bit more, and instead of a quarter note, why don't we say a dotted eighth note? And for that we can do 8n with a period. And let's actually increase the feedback amount a little bit more. So let's say 0.7. And again, you can think about that like it's 70%. So let's try this one. Yeah, so there you can hear it's got a different delay time, as well as a longer succession of repeats. And if you're wondering what these subdivisions are based on, the default BPM, or tempo, is 120 BPM. And we'll see in a subsequent video how to change the BPM of the session. So now let's look at the second option for setting the parameters in the constructor, and that is with the use of an options object. So here we see feedback delay options. This is going to be the TypeScript interface that's going to tell us which parameters we can pass in. So we can hover over it or we can click on it. And here you can see that in addition now to delay time and feedback, there's a couple of additional parameters that we can use, like max delay and this wet parameter. So whereas before where we just passed in the individual arguments, you can see that as a more convenient way to set up just the basic parameters that you're going to use all the time, like delay time and feedback. But if you do want these additional options, you can pass in this options object and set it up that way. So by default, the maximum delay time that you can have in Tone.js is one second. But if we set the max delay to something greater than that, we can increase the possible delay time. And then with the wet setting, that's going to be the balance between the dry signal, or the original signal coming from the tone synth, and the wet signal, or the delayed signal. So that's going to allow us to adjust the balance between the two. So let's go back to our code now and try some of these additional options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line with the feedback delay, and comment out the first one, and we're going to try the second approach here, passing in that options object. And inside of this object, we're going to set those parameters. So let's do delay time first. And this time, instead of using a note duration, let's use a time value in seconds. So why don't we try 500 milliseconds? That would be 0.5. And let's set the feedback as well. Let's set that to 0.3. And let's just go ahead and save and hear that. So if you remember from before, I said the maximum delay time that's set as a default is one second. So if I were to set this at two, for example, two seconds, we would still just hear the delay at one second. You see, if I set this to one, there won't be any difference. But now that we have this options object, we can set max delay, and we can increase that maximum delay time. So let's set it to two here, and then let's try setting this to two. So you can hear now there's much more space in between each repetition. But let's comment this out. Let's set the delay time to something a bit shorter again. Let's say 700 milliseconds. And let's try that wet parameter, which again is the balance between the dry signal and the wet signal. And let's try setting it to 30%, 0.3. As opposed to mostly wet signal, let's say 0.9. So there you could hear the balance of the original dry sound was much softer compared to the repeats. So in this video, we got an overview of some of the effects in Tone.js, and we specifically looked at the feedback delay. But by looking at the feedback delay, you should be able to take that same approach now to creating instances of the other types of effects as well. We saw how to connect those effects to our sound sources, in this case our synth, and then take that effect and route it to the destination. 
And we also saw two ways of passing in arguments to the constructor function of the feedback delay. On the one hand, using individual arguments, and on the other, using an options object. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you can make sure to catch the next video released in this series. See you next time.